Okay, today I want to get into how to read and interpret a soil test result. The first thing we need to look at in your test result is your pH. It's the most important thing that you can correct in your soil. Here we have a 5.8 and it needs to be 6.4. The reason being is that at 6.4 there are more nutrients available to the plant at that pH than at any other pH. Suffice it to say. To get there, we need to put two tons per acre of limestone on. We don't need magnesium. You can get a high mag lime uh, that if you're short on magnesium, you can get your mag that way. But we don't need it, obviously. We're already excessive on magnesium. These parts per million levels of phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium should be around 100 each. So if you're short on them, you need to get them. So everybody knows that fertilizer is NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But what you might not know is that the uh, levels, when you get like a 10, let's say you get a 10, 20, 10 formulation of fertilizer, they're measuring phosphate and potash, not the elemental phosphorus and potassium but the chemical that it comes in. And then you can get this in different forms as well, so that there are, you know, let's say you need sulfur. You're down here, you're short on sulfur. You could ask your, your guy that's formulating your fertilizer to use something that has sulfur in it. Um, in this case, uh, when I got my, my uh, custom mix made, we're gonna use MAP, which is a monomonium phosphorus okay so the chemical is monomonium phosphate it has an ammonium in it and a phosphate molecule so it's instead of uh, PO5 is PO4 but uh, getting off into the weeds there so to speak generally this is a heavier molecule than potash because it has so much more oxygen in it so most of the time when you see your formulation you're going to see twice as much phosphate as you do potash and that's why. But what I like to do is take my soil test into a really good um, ag service guy and get this stuff measured out and put together custom mixed. That way you don't have too much of anything or not enough of something. Um, a lot of guys I see it just throw on whatever fertilizer is down at the at the feed store and uh, that's a bad idea just uh, get it custom mixed and you get the right amounts you're not wasting money you're not polluting the environment and you you know really uh, you're gonna save a lot of money that way and get your get your nutrients correct there's a such thing as too much of one thing as well and they have to be in the correct ratio. So never use what I see a lot of guys do, and that is the moron method. If, if some is good, put more on. That doesn't work that way. So always get a test and custom mix your fertilizer. Now you can take your general bags of fertilizer with your different analysis and do a little bit of math and get these pretty close just by mixing them together. So in our formulation, we're putting on 150 pounds of potash and 134 pounds of MAP. I'm gonna get into these uh, secondary nutrients a little bit, but he's also gonna add those on for me since we're short. So we're right at about 80 bucks an acre to put this on, which, you know, it's not too bad. So getting down into the lower level here, first thing we come across is calcium. Calcium is extremely important to plants. Um, it's involved in just about everything and including uh, your soil structure. So you want that to be, this is bare minimum. A thousand is better for a minimum on that, which shouldn't be a problem here because we already put our uh, two tons of limestone on so that should bring our calcium up where we need it to be 
acidity is just don't worry about that too much right now it's the uh, the amount uh, the mill equivalents per hundred grams of soil of hydrogen ions this is a very important number CEC what is it the, it's a cation exchange capacity what it is is the capacity of your soil to exchange nutrient ions, positively charged particles. So your positive ions are potassium, magnesium, and calcium. And the soil can exchange so much of that. And this is kind of a floating number. You can't say, well, um, 12 is great, 6 is bad. It really all depends on your soil structure. The cation exchange capacity is located on on your um, clay particles and organic matter in your soil. So if your organic matter, your humus is high, you should have a good CEC ratio. If you have a good clay component in your soil, it should be good. If you have a very sandy soil, this could be very low. Okay, so the percent base saturation of the CEC, these are your cations, all right? Potassium, magnesium, calcium. And the percent of each of these that takes up the cation exchange capacity is what these numbers are. This is a very important ratio. These ratios should be about 68% uh, calcium, 12% magnesium, and 4% potassium. So as you can see, we're right on the money there with the magnesium. The calcium's too low, but again, our limestone application should solve that. So you can see where you're, you know, I keep going back up here to this lime, it solves a lot of problems. One thing I didn't get done here is organic matter. Always get an organic matter test, it costs five bucks. And you should also get a, a sodium level. Sodium is another uh, uh, positive ion. But they don't consider it a critical, uh, essential nutrient, but it is, uh, useful in your uh, in your overall picture okay so organic matter you should shoot for like five percent if it's real low like a one percent uh, you should probably add some compost or some some sort some form of uh, humix uh, there's a, a lot of different places you can get that and yeah, like biochar uh, compost sewage sludge etc okay that's that's about all i want to say about about that but or, organic material is very important oh the other thing i wanted to say about that is that for every one percent of organic matter there's probably 40 50 pounds of nitrogen that's actually available to the plants so you can see that it's pretty important you can have uh, all your nitrogen supplied by the by the micro microorganisms working on that organic matter and breaking it down okay so they also give you some trace elements over here which I don't know if I would really consider these trace they're, they're extremely important in the soil for plant health uh, zinc should be a minimum of 10 parts per million Copper should be a minimum of five parts per million, and sulfur is a minimum of 50 parts per million, but can also be up to 300 parts. Sulfur is extremely important in a lot of uh, chemical processes in the plant, and a shortage of sulfur is gonna hurt you. Uh, sulfur is used in nodulation of your legumes, it's part of a lot of amino acids and it's part of chlorophyll molecules. Copper uh, is used in just about everything. It, uh, it's a catalyst for a lot of reactions in your uh, plant life. Uh, it can be used to fight uh, fungus, among other things. Um, what else can we talk about? Zinc, uh, useful in chlorophyll production. Uh, seed formation and carbohydrate formation. 
All right, so your NPK uh, are considered your macronutrients and nitrogen, you need it to build the, the plant. It's, uh, it's in chlorophyll and it's in proteins. And it's also in carbohydrates. So everything that's in the plant has nitrogen in it. Also has carbon in it. So carbon can be taken out of the air and so can nitrogen. So that's a good thing. So um, let's see, phosphorus, root growth. Um, you remember studying in high school biology about ATP. Uh, it's the energy transfer inside of a cell. So that's a phosphate molecule. It's important in cell division. So anytime a cell divides, you need ATP. So you need phosphorus. Potassium is uh, used in protein synthesis, fruit formation, photosynthesis, and enzyme functions. And like I said, calcium is used in just about everything. Magnesium, I don't know if I said that, if I talked about magnesium, but it's chlorophyll production and mobilizes phosphorus. Um, you don't want any of these to be totally out of whack. Like you, you gotta have uh, your calcium, magnesium ratio has to be 68 and, um, and 12. If it gets too out of whack, you can screw up your soil structure and it won't allow nutrients to flow properly through the soil and into your plant roots. Okay, so anybody that watched this all the way through, um, if you watch the whole thing and you subscribe and comment down below, uh, I'll reward you with um, a personal analysis. If you, if you uh, get your soil tested, I will go over it and discuss it with you and get you your fertilizer recommendation. I'll take care of that for you. Um, go ahead and comment down below. Send me your, uh, your soil test results via email and I'll see you on the next one. We'll talk about this some more. I'll probably uh, do another one and maybe go into a little bit more in depth on these, uh, these nutrients. So until then, uh, like and subscribe and comment down below and I'll see you next time.